Recently, I sat down with Roman Mirnov. Roman is a relationship coach, and we had a very interesting conversation. During this unique conversation, you're going to hear Roman talk about unconditional love and invisible tubes, the love language. Also, the highlight of the show for me was when Roman talked about how to turn your baggage into knowledge. This is a very interesting interview that we all need to listen to because we all have relationships, and sometimes we need to listen to outside sources. And this is a wonderful source to listen to because he's been there in the trench in that depressive time of divorce. It's unique when you can talk to somebody that has went through a divorce because divorce is something you don't want. And Roman can help you develop skills to avoid those dark, depressive times during a breakup or how to avoid them altogether. You should really connect with Roman and get involved with him. Let's not waste any time and get into this interview with Roman. To overcome, you must educate. Educate not only yourself, but educate anyone seeking to learn. We are all dead America. We can all learn something. To learn, we must challenge what we already understand. The way we do that is through conversation. Sometimes we have conversations with others. However, some of the best conversations happen with ourselves. Reach out and challenge yourself. Let's dive in and learn something right now. And welcome. Today we have a great guest with us, Roman Miranov. Roman is a relationship coach, which has been trained by Tony Robbins. Would you please introduce yourself, and could you let people know just a little bit about yourself and what you do, Roman? Yeah. Hi, Ed. Thank you for having me today. It's a privilege. Thank you so much. So, yeah, I am a relationship coach, and I, I had my training with the Tony Robbins program. It's called Robbins Madonna's Training. And my goal in life is to help people create a happier lifestyle for themselves and with a special focus on relationships. What made you get into being a relationship coach after you went through a divorce? That's correct. So that was one big reason. I failed in my marriage and my wife got a divorce. So I had to... I had to realize, and that was a painful realization, that I was I actually sucked with women. I did not understand them at all. I did not understand how to build a relationship and how to keep it going. So I went out and started dating, started creating relationships, practicing every tip that I could get my hands on. And I think I learned a lot. So I felt that now I could actually help people with this because I'm relatable and I have this knowledge. That was one thing. The other thing is that I'm a big fan of self-improvement and Tony Robbins especially. I, I believe that the self-improvement tools that we have available to us really, really help us. And I do believe that we can help people with those tools. I thought that I could, you know, use, just be a great help to people in that area. And the third thing is I actually moved 
from Russia to Canada last year. So I had been a translator for 14 years before that. And after moving, I thought, okay, what's my ne what, what, what's next for me? I wanted to shift my career and I got into coaching. So these three things, they came together and that's how I am now a coach. Well, that sure is a great way to get into the profession. You know, the number one thing that I say a good relationship needs is good communication. Why do you think we find it so hard to communicate with the one that is so close to us? Uh, first of all, Ed, uh, let me really acknowledge you for this understanding because I totally agree. Communication is the blood flow of any relationship. That's true. I think one big reason, like a uh, philosophical reason, is that over time people build resentment toward each other. And every time they add to that resentment, they stop talking to each other or a reduced communication. And just with time, it becomes like a snowball, the silence in the relationship. So people really get used to that silence. As a result, the next thing they know, a few years down the road, they just don't talk anymore. They forgot how to do it. They just really forgot how to do it because silence has become their def default mode. And on a more practical yeah. level, so one thing that happens to relationships is that people actually use silence, the silent treatment, as punishment. So instead of resolving their problems by talking to each other, they say, okay, you, di you did something that I don't like or you didn't do something that I wanted you to do, and now I'm going to give you the silent treatment. And this, yeah, this creates silence that I, that I was talking about. Yeah. You know, I've been in a relationship. I've been married 35 years together with my wow. wife, 37 years. Yeah. And wow. relationship is definitely hard. Uh, taking responsibility for our own actions can be difficult. How important is taking responsibility for our own actions in a relationship? Well, yeah, of course it is important. And one thing that, you know, I think people fail in one area is that they, they think that the problem is out there. They think that, like, if they're not happy with their relationship, the problem was with, was with the other partner. They think they, oh, let's say they, they don't cook for me, whereas I want them to cook for, for me. And they don't do it. And see, they look for the problem in, in their, their partner. But if they take 100% responsibility, if they are proactive, they will look at themselves. They will see that it's just, you know, a wish that they have. And maybe it's, maybe it's not realistic. And what they can do then, they can become a role model and exemplify the change that they want to see in the partner. Let's say they start cooking more and they inspire the partner by talking about cooking, by showing how great it is to cook. And the next thing they know, very likely their partner will start cooking. So that's how you take responsibility for what, for your part in the relationship. And that's how you inspire your partner to do better. Another big thing about relationships. I ran across a gentleman that taught boundaries. His name is Gary Smalley, and he does relationship coaching also. And he pointed out that boundaries are so important in any type of relationship. What would be your process of identifying where your boundaries are set? Well, I, I think it's, it's pretty easy. If you are thinking about your own boundaries, I, I normally take my clients through this process of usually this happens at a point when the relationship is pretty challenging and they are 
they are even considering a breakup. So I sit down with them and I tell them, okay, let's well, let's write down what's critical for you, what what you can can accept and what you cannot accept. Basically, let's say you cannot uh, accept like things that are abusive. For example, when your partner tells you something that is really offensive. So okay, so the first point that you're writing down is this: I cannot accept offensive remarks from you because they're putting me down. And this is going to be a boundary. Now, money, it's often a big part of any problem in a relationship. How can we avoid putting money in front of our relationships? Yeah, that's a good question. That's true. I think, I think the, first, the first recommendation is, of course, to make enough money. That solves like 95% of the problem. Because if you don't have enough money, you will have fights about it. There's, there's just no other way. And so you need to go see the root problem, which is really not having enough money, fixing it, and then you can resolve the remaining 5%. So basically, it's, uh, you need to resolve the, the, the root issue. That's what I believe. Your couple can be happy without money, but it's so difficult, so difficult. And why would you want to do that? Why would you want to make things difficult for yourself? Uh, yeah. Now, now if, if I can interrupt just for a moment, Roman, um, I want to put in a little context here about our economy today and really neither person can do anything about what the economy is really diving into during this COVID pandemic that we're dealing with. So there's sometimes that these things happen where we just can't control it. And we're still going to feel that anger and hostility about not having enough to get through. That's a very hard, rocky time in any relationship. I've been there many times. But pulling through that together and understanding that money is not everything in life, getting over the challenge of being without, I, I just listened to a podcast that you were on and you were talking about your father saying – well, if things go bad, he would just go live in a tent on the beach and he would be happy anyway. That's kind of what I'm talking about with that money. So how can we deal with that better and understand each other and not put pressure on one another about, hey, you need to go get a job, you bum, when, when there's not – that real necessity to condemn each other for a situation that maybe neither one can control. Okay, yeah, good point. So aside from that, that general recommendation that I gave, I believe that here the couple must exercise unconditional love, which is mm. giving acceptance to each other, accepting each other as they are without any expectations. So, for example, when it comes to money, you say, yeah, of course, like you say to your partner, of course I understand that you don't have the ability to make money now and it's totally okay. And I'm here to support you. I'm here to give you love. I'm here to help you emotionally and financially to go through this and you can get whatever support you need from me and this is actually something that i do i do see in my female clients a lot because they are often afraid of losing their job and they and they tell me i want my husband or i want my boyfriend to be supportive here because if they would just tell me that they would support me through this period, let's say two or three months, 
without me having to um, to struggle and maybe to find a temporary job that I don't want to work. I want to spend those two or three months just looking for what I really want. So if I could be free from worry and depression about this through my husband or my boyfriend helping me with this, just supporting me, this would mean a world to me. So they really, like this female clients that I'm talking about, they crave this um, support from their men. And men can score so many points for themselves here if they do this. And, and it's quite simple, right? Just, you know, just hear her out, just give her some support and just, and also give her this little financial support over this month. And she, she will just love you. Okay, you've been through a divorce. You know, I've never experienced divorce. My parents are divorced. My wife's parents are divorced. So we kind of looked on as children to these divorced parents. And I noticed my parents, for instance, they had baggage and they just took the baggage to another relationship with them. How can we help people that have went through a divorce not to bring the old baggage with them into this new relationship? Hmm. Yeah, that's a very good question. And uh, before before diving into it, actually, I, I, I want to say that I really admire you guys, you and your wife, because what you did, this is fantastic. You are like transitional people. You stopped the stopped the pain that was going in in the previous generation. So in your generation, there's not going to be that kind of pain. And very likely that your your kids will have healthy functional relationships because they now see your example rather than seeing a divorced family. And, and when it comes to baggage, uh, there are a lot of techniques that you can actually use, but the basic idea is to release the pain that you have, release the emotion. The first step is to go through the rejection, which happens after divorce or after any breakup. You go through the rejection, then you go to acceptance. So your, your goal is to accept the emotion, accept the fact that it happened and say, yeah, what's the lesson in it for me? What does this breakup or this divorce tell me about? What kind of changes do I need to make in myself? So you need to learn the lesson there. And when you learn the lesson and you look at the experience as it was a lesson, that's when you turn this baggage into knowledge, speaking metaphorically. Yeah, and from there, you, 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 you just don't have it. I know it's not easy. Of course, I do recognize that. So that requires quite a lot of inner work. But that's how we get there. So you, you really change your focus. You give a different meaning to what happened. And then you say, I'm going to just become a better person through this. And I will use this knowledge to make my next relationship better. At the very least, I know myself better at this point. I know what kind of mistakes I can make. And I, I just don't want to repeat those mistakes. Yeah, that's really good advice. Roman, do you want to marry again? And if so, what would you change? Oh, this is such a great question. First of all, I am so much looking forward to creating my second family, and I'm sure that it's going to be like the, the, the only family that I have because I, I, I want it to be final. Yeah, the, the very first thing I would do is building it based on unconditional love from the get-go. I never knew what unconditional love was in my, in my previous family. I know it now, I believe. At least I know it better. And that's what I'm going to use in 
as the guiding principle in my new family. Now I know that as, you know, as Stephen Covey teaches, love is a verb. So you love the other person by actually loving them. And you, you don't, you don't need actually feeling to love them because so many people say, okay, I, I'm going to, to love the other person when I have like feelings for them. But generally, that's not how it works. Feelings are good. But feelings, you know, subside with time and the, when the newness wanes off. But we can actually make, make it a practice to love the other person. And by doing that, amazing things happen. First of all, when we love them, we give them love, we feel it as well. That's how unconditional love works. You share your love and you feel it in inside you. And then you see that it makes the other person happy and it makes us happy as well, right? Especially for men, because men are, uh, men are geared toward making their women happy. And the third thing is that when our partner realizes that we love them unconditionally, they, they realize, wow, it's actually okay for me to love the other person as well. And that's when they reciprocate. So that's what I'm going to, to use as the guiding principle in my family. And look, well, I visualize a family with, so with a wife and three kids, and I imagine how, how the five of us are all interconnected to each other through these invisible tubes, and through these tubes flows emotional support, love, warmth, great energy, enthusiasm, encouragement all the time. So it's like, um, no, I, I really get emotional even just talking about that. Yeah, thank you for this question, Ed. No, that's, that's one of the good questions. And, you know, it, it is one of those defining things that make a person, how they're going to overcome and change after failure. And I really applaud you. I've listened to a lot of your content and you have a very rock solid look on life now. And I'm sure that even though we see things as a failure, it can also be a new beginning. So I applaud you for what you are doing out there. How important is it to spend quality time with your partner? Oh, oh my God, it's so important. It's so important. Everyone, especially women, they want 100% attention. So anytime that you spend with your partner, you should be giving them the, that attention. You should be listening to them very carefully. You should be listening actively, acknowledging what you're hearing so that you really feel, really help them to feel heard out. That's so important. You also need to ask high quality questions. You also want to learn the love language of your partner and to understand how they want to receive love. You know, some people prefer just like physical touch. Others prefer receiving gifts. Others prefer acts of service and so on. That will make your time also the time you spend together, quality time. And that's actually one of the love, love languages. <sighs> yeah, it's just spending quality time with each other. Some people like that language. And, you know, I always recommend talking a lot every day to each other, like having these deep conversations, going for walks together, having at least one date night a week. All, all, all these things are really, really quality time, and they, yeah, they make a difference in a relationship. So it's, 
it's really important to understand that you need to set uh, set aside the special time zones for you guys to talk to each other and do all this quality time activities because it's so easy to forget about those, right? Because, you know, especially now that so many people work from home, work can swell up and actually take like your entire day. And you need those time zones. You need to think strategically about quality time and really set aside one hour or maybe even two hours to give that gift of your time to your partner and also to your kids <laughs> if you have them. So you have a podcast. Could you tell us about your podcast a little bit? And why do you podcast? Actually, my podcast is called Be Version 2.0 of Yourself. So I have 40 episodes at this point. And I originally focused on just generic self-improvement topic. But now I want to focus on relationships more. But I'm guilty of not paying too much attention to it recently because I sort of, you know, lost my lost my motivation to, to do it. But I think, I, yeah, it's a good reminder for me to get back to it. So my, my focus with the recent episodes was on, uh, was actually interviewing experts relationship experts or coaches like myself and focusing on one specific topic like getting over a breakup or great online communication. Yeah, things like that. How can people connect with you and receive some of your relationship counseling? The easiest way is for for your listeners to go to my website, which is www.romanmiranov.com, spelled as R-O-M-A-N-M-I-R-O-N-O-V. Hit the contact tab, sign up for a free consultation with me, and make sure to mention that you're coming off Ed Waters podcast so that I give you a 30% discount of a coaching package. Well, that is a special offer, people. And I'll tell you, you want to make sure and go get involved with Roman. He's got a lot of great insight. And because of his experience, this is a wonderful deal to get involved with him and understand what not to do and possibly help your relationship along. Roman, it sure has been a delight talking with you. And I sure hope you podcast more and keep talking. Thank you for being on Dead America Podcast, Roman. Thank you so much, Ed. It's, it's been a privilege and uh, a great, a great opportunity for me to reach out to your audience. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this podcast enlightening, entertaining, educational in any way, please share, like, subscribe, 
And join us right back here next week for another great episode of Dead America Podcast. I'm Ed Waters, your host. Enjoy your afternoon, wherever you may be.